Welcome back to Here's the Common Gang. Today, in deck number 669, we're going to talk about Magda, Brazen Outlaw. A little mono red action going for us. We had uh, other dwarves you control get plus one, plus O, oh, so we have a dwarf champion of sorts. But here's where it gets good. Whenever a dwarf you control becomes tapped, create a treasure token. It could stop right there, and I'm in, you know? But, you know, because... What would a card be without eight lines of text? Well, seven. Sacrifice five treasures. Search your library for an artifact or a dragon. Put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle. So, we got a couple of things that we're trying to do. Obviously, we are dwarf tribal. We want a lot of dwarves, and we want to tap the dwarves. We want treasures. And then, man, I'm getting a real, real hobbit feel to this. Um... I may have should have shelved this until, like, next year. No. But we want to sack five treasures to get the free dragon, right? Uh, I mean, so uh, let's look at the dragons first, because why not? I have five dragons. Uh, the Hellkite Tyrant is not one of them because it needs to be um, really, really amazing. I We have a Gadrak. Because it, it works with treasures, it makes treasures, sure, why not? We have Balefire Dragon. Mainly just because it's a beater. I mean, deals combat damage to a player to each creature that player controls. So if they don't have a flyer to chump it with, you can just blow up all their elves. Or oh. Balefire Dragon is an amazing card. We have Goldspan Dragon. You know, uh... Attacks or becomes a target, you get a treasure. And then your treasures has sack for double. So that's kind of cool. Um, Dragon Mage. If you We're mono red. There's a good chance we're, we're running out of our hand. So, eh. This way, it has a chance to refuel. Now, granted, everybody's doing it, but... Ideally, we're probably not discarding anywhere near what they're discarding. And then, of course, the Hellkite Igniter, which this is... I love the fact that this is a uh, artifact breathing, I, I guess is what... Metalcraft breathing? Uh, affinity breathing, no. You get what I'm saying. For two mana, it gets plus X, where X is the number of artifacts we control. We're already getting some treasures here, so... Um, so I guess with that, that's it for the dragons. Uh, I guess we can go get some artifacts. Um, I don't know that we'll want to do that, but you know, we've, we've got treasure map, dwarven hammer, bearded axe. Now, but I do want to talk about the spring leaf drum because the spring leaf drum has to go in there because we're looking for ways to tap dwarves. Here we are. We can tap a dwarf. Through Springleaf Drum to get that mana. We can tap a dwarf through Dwarven Blood B Boiler. Tap as many dwarves as we want. I actually, I have had a chance to play this. Um, I did cast the Blood Boiler and tap enough to get the five to go and get the dragon. It, it didn't do any good because I got board wiped, but hey, it happened, right? So. Now let's look at, you know, just some good old fashioned ramp. Of course, we got our soul ring, fire diamond, pristine talisman, spectral searchlight, a couple of rituals, you know, pyretic ritual and desperate ritual. I didn't go up to seething song because we don't really have that much expensive stuff in the deck. So, uh, some card draw with faithless looting, light up the stage and wax the chomp like a candle, uh, thrill of possibility. Now, Court of Ire, I'm not sure if I want to count this as card draw or removal. If it's if you're not the monarch, this card is terrible. <laughs> if somebody takes the monarch from you, this card is terrible. Uh, yeah, at the beginning of Joe Keep, you get a free shock. Woo. But if you're the monarch, not only are you drawing that extra card. It deals seven to that permanent instead. So that's pretty sweet. So let's look at some dwarves, shall we? 
we have, in no particular order, Seven Dwarves. So I want to talk to you about Seven Dwarves. Now, we all know the Seven Dwarves from Snow White. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a theory that people say, because to most people... Now, granted, your hardcore Disney fans can name all seven. Um, but there's a theory about the one that you miss, because everybody can dependably name six, but not seven. And the one that you can't remember differs from person to person. It's kind of weird. But that psychologically, that's supposed to say something about you, the, the person. I don't know. But here is my seven doors. I'm going to call it one, two, three. Clever, I know. Four, five, six, and seven. Had to get those out of the way because you know the. You knew they were in there. My favorite dwarf of all time, Torbran. Oh, Torbran's so awesome. A spark Mage, Dwarven Scorcher. While not per se a dwarf, uh, Dwarven Reinforcements does create two dwarf tokens. So why not? Dwarven Recruiter. It's a good card, I mean, for a dwarf deck. Uh, Balthor the Stout. We are going to wait while you stop laughing. Because, yes, there are no other Barbarians in the entire deck. I know. It does not belong. It's a dwarf. It is a 3-mana 2-2 two -two dwarf that it has a blank text box in this deck. I know. This is my slot for the... Um, the Hellkite Tower? No. The... The Big Treasure Dragon. This is the slot. I can't even think of it right now. Uh, Bloodline Pretender, Fearless Liberator. Now, Dwarven Blast Miner, yes, it does have a tap ability built into it, so that makes it awesome. You get to spend three mana, tap your dwarf, destroy a land, get a treasure, and lose friends. Actually, no, you won't lose friends. You'll just lose your, you know, dwarf, because people don't let this guy live. They really, really don't. You might get one land off of it, and hence one treasure, but, whew, yeah, it dies quick. Uh, Vault Robber, Axe Guard Cavalry, Dwarven Warriors, another dwarf that taps. One of the original dwarves. Uh, Enslaved Dwarf, Dwarven Grunt, Dwarven Nomad. We're tapping again. Uh, Dwarven Lieutenant. Now, this has only had one printing. Is this on the list? Is this like 27 cent card on the list? I don't know. All I know is this is the only printing it's had, and it's Fallen Empire, so it stands to reason that, that is... Uh, anyway. Liberated Dwarf, and then Rimrock Knight, because, you know, it's a dwarf, and it's got the Boulder Rush on the front side. Uh, I do have a weird category here. Um, Brass's Bounty, just to get them treasures, because, you know, board wipes happen, and you look down, and all you got's lands, and you don't have creatures, and Boom. You happen to draw into a Brass's Bounty, and there's, you know, a whole bunch of treasure for you. On flavor standpoint, I had to put the Dwarven Catapult in. It's not that bad. Uh, Dwarven Catapult does X damage divided evenly among all of opponent's creatures. So, it's got to be a big one. I don't know how Torbrand works with this. I think you would divide it evenly and then add two to all the targets. I think so. I don't know. Help me out, y'all. Judge. Uh, Claws of Alicate. I mean, we're playing Mono Red. I, we might sneak a commander to, to win in there. Uh, Burning Earth. Whenever a player taps a non-basic land for mana, they take a damage. Now, we are playing some non-basics. Um, but now, stuff like Smoldering Crater and Desert of the Fervent, you know... We're probably cycling those. Uh, to me, the landscape's not going to stay in play. But Rogue's Passage, Dwarven Mine, and Castle Embrith probably will stay in play, you know. Um, but then, I know there's a thing, goblins against dwarves, and I know it's wrong uh, to put a goblin card on a dwarf deck, but it's just such a good card. 
And we're going to say the dwarves stole this from the goblins, or the goblins left it, or whatever. And then we have Anazar and Ruins. We don't get a lot of, you know, tribal hate, and it's not like this just destroys them, you know? Although that may not be as bad, and it's just not letting them untap. Uh, hmm. You can target one creature if somebody happens to be playing a tribe you can't handle. Meh, why not? Okie dokie, so now we have got our removal. You know, Chain Lightning, Flame Javelin, Hammer of Bogarden. I had to put the hammer in there because it just seemed very dwarf-like to me, you know. Uh, a Braid, Vow of Lightning... Tabalt's Trickery can work in a pinch, maybe. Disintegrate. Fireball. Transmogrify. And we'll turn on the blue hate here with the Active Volcano and Red Elemental Blast. Uh, because, you know, some people play with blue cards. <laughs> I am one of those. <laughs> I play with all the colors, though, to be honest with you. Got me some treasure tokens, some dwarf tokens. I like to put the tokens in the deck, in the deck box as I'm building it, just so I'll have it. Or I say I'll have it, whoever's playing it will have it because a lot of times it may not be me playing. It could be one of y'all, who knows? Um, 669, Magda is done and dwarf deck. It, it's a. Uh, it feels a little different than the other dwarf decks that I, I've done, um, you know, with the treasure and the dragon thing, but meh. But uh, that's what we've got for today. I do appreciate y'all watching. Y'all let me know what you think. And uh, right now, we're going to go ahead and shuffle and cut.